We are here at the 4.8 mile Edmonton Endurance Course, our first road course race of the season, and it's also the longest track on the Novar Verizon Cup Series calendar. First of news and notes, Ethan Lindgers gets an upset win in Indy after starting that race in 26th. Lindger led the final 40 laps in route to his victory in that one, which that basically held, included a holding off a charge from Walt Youthen in car number eight. Um, another big storyline that actually just came up this week, Luke Warren, who was actually been out for about several weeks due to his injury that happened at Chicagoland. Luke Warren will return to the 14 as of this week, as he was supposed to return for the Atlanta weekend. However, doctors had cleared him due to a very quick recovery, a lot quicker than doctors expected. So they cleared him for him to return to this race. And, and if you see on the traditional news and notes, our traditional winners are not really scrolling because the only other race that was run here was at the Edmonton Airport, in which Tyler Park basically just dominated that race. He led all 20 laps in Route 2 that victory and with this being a road course race the differences between a road course race in the Novar Verizon Cup Series and a standard oval race is that there are only local yellow flags so no yellow flags will be out so if this race does have some accidents and you don't really see the yellow flag come up um, that's basically the reason why and for the second time in about three weeks our television feed was screwed up again so when we do start the recap it'll pick up on lap number three as i mentioned in the pre-race broadcast the edmonton endurance course is the longest track that the novar verizon cup series tackles um the last time we went here blake battagliana led the final 31 laps to win this race in 2014 and now your AFLAC Pole Award winner is Jason Calasso in card number 04. Shay Clark the third in card number 98 starts in second. Shane Harden, your points leader going this recent weekend. CJ Gordon second in points. They ended up DNQing. While to Youth in your third place man in points starts in the eighth, seventh spot. While Mike Hogan starts in 19th. And just to also keep in mind, we have four rookies making the race here, and I believe that's the most so far this year. That also includes debutant Frank Meridian for Calcom Corporation. Their team is own car, which is driven by Tobias Newbridge, ended up DQing, and Logan Chin will start in last. So we pick up the coverage here on lap number three. Damon Scott in car number 18 is in the way. Here you see in the back row, Matt Cameron, car number 28 in that 3M Chevy. Scott and Hamill were the first two cars able to get away from that first lap carnage. We saw Walter Ethan, Mike Hogan, Ethan Linger all get swept up in the S's. And Jason Calasso, your pole sitter actually for this race, was actually thrown off the course just one lap in. As we see the third place cars. The third and fourth place cars added being Scott Johnson running in third, Brian Kittleson in number 53 running in the fourth spot. Uh, Kittleson's had a miserable season in that 53 so far. You see Scott Johnson diving into the pits. Justin Clinkson in car number 24 who is running in the sixth spot also dives in the pit road. Jonathan Winslow in car number 00. Winslow was one of the favorites going into this weekend to win the race. And then you see Shane Norton in number 32 who started 27th in his race. He has climbed his way up back to um, fifth as of now. There you see, here's the battle for what was for ninth between Shane Bliss and Shane Clark III. Uh, Shane Clark III couldn't really, he just had a bosom leader and he will fall back a couple of spots thanks to him running off the course. Scott Johnson, Colonel Hunky, who just pitted, gets by that number 98 car of Shane Clark III. As we're going to see, the other three of Shane Howard. Howard is going to appear to hold that line as Shane Howard and the 03 cars also had a dismal time with the, uh, with the uh, organization. As we had our incident here in the on coming in the into the final corner, Brian Wilson and Shane Trux make contact as those two cars sent each other around. As they see the 73 of Trux will be the first one to keep going. Brian Wilson coming to the body will keep on going as well. And I believe the 73 would actually also pick because of this damage, and I believe Brian Wilson in that night car also did likewise. Here is Walter Youth in the corner eight. Walter Youth in who was the highest of the Drivers in the points hands to actually qualify for this race. Uh, Walter Ethan will most likely take over the points lead, barring something happens to him and that forcibly takes him out of the race. However, we're about six laps in and about 30 cars are running on the track, so I don't think that will happen. And even that, but he would at least tie the points, at least tie Harden for the points lead, but he's right now running in 12, and I believe he just passed uh, Cameron Brooks. That was for, I believe, 11th. And there you see Ryan Pearson in car number two. That is actually for the 10th spot as well, so Walter Ethan could at least crack himself into the top 10 if he was able to catch that number two of Ryan Pearson as going down into the final two corners. As he appears that eight car of Youthen will be pulling away 
from that 33 car of Cameron Brooks. As he appears walks to the U-turn, front eight will start pulling away. As Uthid, who's just been one of the more consistent of our drivers on the track, as basically Ethan Lindinger, when he's had about five straight top ten finishes, Uthid's kind of had a similar streak, however, thanks in part to two 40 plus place finishes. That's kind of the rug of the world. But here you see Mike Hogan's number 17. Mike Hogan's actually had a very good season in front of the 17 for uh, ease racing. However, he's just not had the finish to prove it. He's always brought the strongest car out on the track, and it's a little bit no different as. The only problem is right now he's running in 20th because of the fact that some of the cars are actually running in the back and he was swept up in that first lap car. It's Ethan Lettinger in car number 51 you see up ahead of that number 17. He is also running a little bit close there as you see H Hogan slightly ran over the S's a little bit but keeps the car going. Normally if you slide off the S's you would probably send that car wide and then send it off the track even in rare cases. But Ethan Lindinger, Curve 51, you see he's ahead of Hogan. That's, I believe, Lindinger's running 19th, your Indy winner from last week. As Lindinger, who kind of shocked everybody by winning an Indy and actually basically leading the final 40 laps of that particular race, his teammate so far is currently led all the laps. Here is Shane Kinston, car number 21, near contact between Chris Clark and Kinston. Uh, the 21 of uh, Shane Kinston has basically struggled, and that's basically in part due to the equipment he's had. He actually Acquired this equipment from Grassi Autosport, which Jesse Donahue was the previous driver of that car. Uh, Kingston, I believe, made one other start in Darlington, but he never really did anything noteworthy in that race. And I think that's thanks in part to the equipment. As they're going to be heading around into the widened section, one of the two widened se sections here at the track. As they see Chris Clarkson going to try again. He makes contact again, but this time they don't wreck the car, thankfully. As they see the 21 of Kinson. Kinson looks like he's going to hold the spot. I believe that was for 22nd with Chris Clark at the 56. Chris Clark has been out of the dominant streak that uh, Monster Energy Racing has had in the past several weeks. He's basically the only driver that has not gone to victory lane for that team. Here's Luke Warren, current 14. Warren is back after his horrific accident in the Chicago Universe where his car basically hit an opening in the wall and just tore it apart. Warren was dealing with a shoulder injury. Andrews replaced with Travis Johnson. Johnson did all right in his debut, I believe, in Daytona, and it's kind of fared well, but with no injury, Warren was actually cleared a week early. He was actually supposed to come back for the Atlanta race. However, due to the fact, as I mentioned, he was actually cleared a week early and actually got some practice in that car and was able to practice. Warren is, I believe, a couple laps down due to the fact that I believe he was swept up in a wreck, I believe, towards the... About the same time was that lap one carnage as the 14 of Luke Warren is still trying to hang on there as we're going to head down to the S's there you see Brian Kittleson in number 53 as you see Kittleson he just headed down to the corner meanwhile the ball the battle for fifth was going on Jonathan Rizzo gets into Carter Pavis and Pavis slides around Rizzo is able to keep it going in double zero and there you see I believe that's uh, Logan Chin in the 72 Chin that's not for position and he almost takes him out but Logan Chin just has enough room to clear that double zero is a tough break for Jonathan Winslow. However, later on in that lap, Shane Nargan in car number 32 who ran down Matt Hamlin. He would easily pass car number 20. Hamlin, Hamlin had tried to force him off the track, but both of them keep it on the track as they see the um, 28. Looks like Nargan's able to clear that 28 of Matt Hamlin as the 32 is just going to try on the outside. Hamlin's going to try again on the on the inside line, on the left lane. However, looks like Nargan will be able to clear the 28 before they get into these wide sweeping corners. As Nargan in the 32, Nargan clears the 28 of Hamlin. As it appears that Nargan will fall on to, that, to the new second spot. We would have a green flag stop cycle later on in the run. This is about with Damon Speck in number 18. This is actually where be the first time around that 14. We had a couple incidents, first of which Walter Green goes hard into the wall, along with Brian Wilson in car number 90. There you see Scott Johnson. He barely makes contact Move with Brian Wilson. Lap later, Jonathan Winslow Day went, just went from bad to worse. He goes into the inside wall, into the wall hard. Brian Kittleson, car number 53, is also collected. So a really tough downturn of the event for car number 00 of Jonathan Winslow. Brian Kittleson was also having a very good run. He would also drop out. We would actually have green flag stops with about 10 laps remaining in the race. Here's Shane Nargan entering the pits. Shane Nargan, who was your defending champion, has basically struggled last year. Even though he's actually shown some pretty good runs, he's just not been able to finish the races. 
and his inconsistent finishes have basically been the reason why he is still low in the points. But so far today, he is right now running in the second spot, as I believe his teammate Damon Scott is already in the pits. They see Matt Cameron and Chris Clark in front of the six there. As Larkin clears away from the pits, as we would have a little bit more drama, as they see Marcus Powell in front of the 74. Powell would try to get into a three wide mess. Keith Hills in 27. Brian Kittleson actually kept on going, my bad. Kittleson will wash up the track, get into the wall hard, into the guard wall pretty hard. Marcus Powell and Keith Hales would also slide off the track as well. However, the another big shocker here's Nargan. Nargan actually was starting to close in on the gap for Damon Scott. He was actually closing in on the lead, but now he's actually choking behind the 14 of Luke Warren. Nargan runs the corner right. He, they make contact with Warren. Warren apparently doesn't like it. Cuts back in front and gets into the 14. And the 42 of Shane Nargan has just basically taken himself basically out of contention for the win, but somehow the car is actually not that badly damaged, and that 32 actually wouldn't even hit. They see Mike Hogan in the 17. However, Hogan's actually a lap down in all this mess. And they see Walter Youth and Carter Murray, who actually pitted, I believe, about the same time Nargan crashed, actually would be able to catch that 17 of Mike Hogan. And this might actually be a really good battle for the win. Actually, for the, this is for actually for the fifth spot. As the 17 of Mike Hogan. Hogan's running it completely wide. Youth in the eight has fresher tires. And this might be a very interesting battle. However, the 17 of Mike Hogan would just pull away from the 8 of Walt's youth. In. And then another, and then Ethan Littinger in front of 51. Littinger would be able to run down that 8 car. As you're going to see, Ethan Littinger, your Indy 250 winner from last week. He will try to go to the bottom of the racetrack under the 8 car of Walt's youth. In. Ethan Littinger will try to challenge for the S's. Youth in runs it a little bit wide. Youth in almost gets into the 51. Littinger clears him there. As not only do we get by Walt's youth in, in the 8. Uh, Ethan Littinger will also chase down that 7 team of Mike Hogan as Littinger, Hogan opens up the bottom and Littinger tries to take advantage and he does and Littinger passes um, Mike Hogan with a lot with better ease than he did with Walt Hughes. Hogan clears, Littinger clears him as Hogan tries to get the run down the back straightaway. He tries to, there he sees he's trying to try again but Littinger will shut the, nearly shut the door there as he will successfully shut the door this time by. So Ethan Lindinger has just pushed himself into a top five. So, But that didn't really matter at all because Damon Scott at this point of the race had led 39 of 39 laps and he's taking the white flag this time by. So unless if something bizarre happens, Damon Scott's pretty much going to win this race by leading every single lap. So, as car number 18 of Damon Scott, he has about an 18 second lead over Shane Nargan. So as long as he runs his lap, Right, he might be able to win his first race of his career as he gets to the S's here just fine. Damon Scott, who started this race in fifth, was able to avoid that uh, first lap carnage to happen. And there's really nobody in sight that he has to really worry about at this point. But we do know that each of his laps take about two minutes to compete. And I don't really see any traffic whatsoever. So Damon Scott might be able to get a clear, clean finish unless his only just blows up, which... Even if Damon Scott blows up, Silver Green Racing will probably go back to back unless if both the 18 and 32 somehow have issues. So Silver Green Racing will be basically walking away with their second consecutive win after starting the season 0-6 and, and have just been kind of questions coming around. Now, now they're probably going to win two races. Damon Scott's going to end up in victory lane. And it's kind of a coincidence that that, that, that the past two Silver Green Racing winners have led the final 40 laps as this is actually a 40 lap race. Whereas Ethan Lindinger led the final 40 laps, so that's kind of odd, but that doesn't matter anyway. Damon Scott taking the S's, and now for another difficult spot, the wide sweeping corner. As looks like Scott clears that, he just has one more corner, and I still don't see any traffic, so unless if there's a car stalled out on the track, which doesn't appear to, Damon Scott's going to ha basically have a clean finish, and around the last two corners, Damon Scott has just completely routed this field and out of the final corner and down the final straightaway, Damon Scott for Silver Green Racing is just going to dominate here at, at Edmonton and he's going to lead all 40 laps in route to a victory here at Edmonton. Damon Scott wins here at Edmonton. So Damon Scott just dominates here at Edmonton, leading every single lap, being the first driver since Eddie Johns 
at Watkins Glen in 2005 to lead every single lap in the Noah Bar Prize Cup Series. Leading every single lap is kind of common in the Gator Series, Truck Series, and even in the lower tiers, but it's kind of rare to see it in the Verizon Cup Series. Shane Nargan, car number 32, uh, almost got that win. However, due to um, interference by uh, Luke Warren, Nargan's chance of winning that one had basically seen there. Matt Kemmel with a very good run in car number 28. Uh, finishes third. He finished about 33 seconds back. The only other car that finished on the lead lap was car number 58 from Scott Johnson. He finished about a minute, a minute 10 back of the leader. As Johnson was just basically quiet throughout the uh, majority of the race, although he kind of lurked in after that first lap, Shane Edigans, and just hung around the top 10 pretty much most of the race. Ethan Lindinger thanks in part to that charge in the closing stages of the race, finishes in fifth, making Silverton Racing have three of their four cars in the top five. Cody White was the only other car that qualified for the race who crashed out. Uh, way early in this one, and then Casey Lester in the p in this one. Mike Hogan in car number 17, he'll finish in the sixth spot. He was able to outrun Walter Euston, even though Walter Euston actually had fresher tires, so he was able to outrun that eight car easily. Walter Euston in car number eight finishes in the seventh spot for Ease Racing. Eighth is Chris Clark in car number 56, just a pretty good bright spot in car number 56. Clark's actually had a decent year, although he's not really been in victory lane, so kids that are in monster energy racing standards, that might be a bad year for Carter six Chris Clark, but take a, excluding that factor, he's having a decent year. Brandon Green with his second straight top 10 finish after his promising run at Indianapolis. So Brandon Green might be able to just push his way back into Carter contention, although he's a little ways from that right now. And then Cameron Brooks in Carter 33 rounds out the top 10. The only other two cars that finished one lap down was Blake Battagliano, last year's winner here. He finished 11th, and Scott Howard in car number 25, he finished one lap down as well in the 12th spot. So leaving Edmonton, we have a new points leader, that being Walt Jesus in car number 8. He has a 18-point gap over Mike Hogan in car number 17, fellow East Racing teammate. And just a little note on the team, on the owner's points for 2015 on how that's handled. Since East Racing is leading the team standings over Monster Energy Racing, if the season had ended here today, not only Walter Youthen would win the Drivers' Championship, he would the 18 would also win the Owners' Championship since they are the highest finishing uh, team champion driver. As uh, since East Racing is on top, and Walter Youthen is the highest of any East Racing driver, as he is the points leader. If Monster Energy Racing had won the title, Harden would have been your Owners' title anyway. As Mike Hogan in car number 17, he's 18 points back of Walter Youthen. Shane Harden, car number 59, drops two spots to third. He entered this weekend with an 11-point lead, and now will be lead, now will be entering Atlanta with a 25-point deficit. Ethan Lettinger, car number 51, is two spots back as he gains two spots, and he's 27 points back in fourth. C.J. Gordon drops three spots to fifth. He is 28 points back, and then he's about a good 31 points back from Scott Johnson, car number 58. Scott Johnson, who gains seven spots into the top 10 and nearly into the top five. He actually tied Eddie John, although technically in tiebreakers, John should be getting the nod, thanks in part to starts, since Eddie John has seven starts, whereas Scott Johnson just has six. And also due to win, that might also matter. As Eddie Johns has one win, Scott Johnson does not have any. As Eddie Johns, he actually doesn't really move anywhere, despite a lead. Actually, no, he actually qualified for the race, but crashed out early. Ike Chase Jr., who's just been stumbling down the points in he's ever since DNQ and in Indy, he drops three more spots to eighth in the point standings. He's now 60 points back. Jay Honore in car number 01 loses a spot to fall 63 points back. He fall, she falls to ninth. And rounding out the top 10 is Damon Scott, who gains seven spots and cracks into the top 10, thanks in part to that his win. And now let's take a look at 11 through 20. Kyrie Youthin and Carter 57 and Max Rapon both drop out of the top 10 due to their DNQs. Youthin dropped from 9th to 11th, while Max Rapon dropped from 10th to 12th. Uh, Youthin is 76 points back, while Max Rapon is 82 points back. Chandler Blake is 86 points back. He drops two spots also to 13th. Chris Clark gains six spots to 14th. However, he is 89 points back. Shane Nargan and Casey Lester are tied with 92 points back and 139 points apiece. Shane Nargan actually has the tiebreaker to do the fact that he has two top 10s, whereas Lester has one. 
Brandon Green in car number 30. He is 94 points back. Uh, he gained seven spots thanks to two straight top 10 finishes. James Wilson Jr. stays where he's at with an 18th place and 96 points back. Mac Hamlin is our big winner of the top 20. He gains 12 spots. Actually, that being Shane Nargan, by the way. Mac Hamlin gains 12 spots and cracks into the top 20. And Jason Duke and Homer 66 cracks into the top 20, gaining five spots, and is only 100 points back of the leader. Now for a race recap here. The caution didn't really matter because it was a road course race. Damon Scott led all 40 laps, so that's why there was no lead changes. Shane Nargan was the high climber. He gained 26 spots to finish in second. Next week, the Royce Cup Series will be off as the main event will be the Freightliner All-American Series Race 5 at Bristol. The Novar Lowe's Modified Tour will be at Iowa. And then the DHL European Tour will be racing at Brno for race number four of the calendar. The next time the Novar Verizon Cup Series drivers will hit the track will be about two weeks when the Verizon Cup Series tackles the 1.5 mile oval at Atlanta. We'd like to congratulate Damon Scott on scoring the dominant victory here at Edmonton. And we'll see you in two weeks at Atlanta.